Dear and Hypen, After the long road, finally, you've almost arrived at this place. Everyone, welcome. Life and death mix, up and down flip. A grand carnival where order has overthrown time. Everyone is invited. We wait for the day we will meet. Sincerely, yours. Hello sunflowers and friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Lena and I make big hit theory videos and today we've got a really exciting one that you guys have been waiting a really long time for. We are going to be talking about Enhypen. They recently had their debut with the album Border Day One and they have two music videos to go with it as well as two different versions of that album, Dusk and Dawn. I will be trying to cover as much as this is possible. There's gonna be stuff I miss just in general because it's less relevant, etc, etc. But yeah, there is a lot. A lot of information. I assume this is going to be a very long video, so you probably already know this at this point. <laughs> the important thing to know here is that a lot of this is actually set up for later, so they have a lot more questions than they do answers, which is really great for all of us and makes my job really easy. But I did want to go through as much as I possibly can today and like put things in an order for you guys that'll hopefully make it all make a little bit more sense. And of course I wanted to go over some of the popular theories because you guys really, 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 really want me to talk about this. Also, before we go any further, I did want to give a huge shout out to Lou over on Twitter. They sent me scans for both of the albums like in entirety like every single page, which was absolutely amazing. So thank you so much, Lou, you are fantastic. But with that out of the way, we have to start this properly. And as much as I want to jump straight into the music videos, we can't understand what's happening in the music videos until we understand where it is they are heading, whether that's something that they are aware of or not. In a lot of the promotions, we heard the line, caminare sulla linea. <laughs> I hope I said right. This is Italian for Walk the Line. Walk the Line is also the name of their intro on the album. Plus, it's something that Jake, who in his numerous voiceovers, mentions just a lot in general. This line that they're walking on is the primary focus of this album. Remember, this album is an introduction to them as an hypen. It is their border, it's their starting point. The line that connects one thing to another, like a hyphen, which is of course their namesake and hypen. It also has a strong focus on opposites, the things that make them different and the things that make them the same. In the video for the album intro, we are told that they were carved on this line. They were created there, so technically speaking, they can go either way. The line of the horizon, the line that connects trainee to artist, humans to vampires, mortals to immortals, past and future, life and death. And we will come back to this idea of the line in a little bit because, like I said, it's it's the theme of their album. But first, like I said, we have to know why they're walking this line and in fact, where they are going. Luckily, we have been handed the answer. Like I said, this album is supposed to be an introduction for them. So if we want to know what happens next, we kind of have to look to the outro. In their song, Outro Cross the Line, we get several answers. We learn that they take a last step, which I suppose means that they have reached their destination for the moment. They've gone from walking the line to actually crossing it. And we are told that they must survive days like a flipped carnival, where up is down and down is up, and life is mixed with death. This carnival is also referenced with two photos in the Dawn version of the album. We see them approaching the carnival, I guess, if you want to call it that. I mean, I mean, there's a tent. And then there's a sign, and similar to the letter that we saw in their performance at Mama, it says, you know, carnival is coming, with really awkward advertising. <laughs> Fun fair, the paradise, don't be last. Wait, what? The outro song is incredibly unsettling. It features carnival music, a very direct reference to the Phantom of the Opera, and then children singing. And let me tell you, the worst part is definitely the children singing. I know. I was also in the Give and Take in music video and just no. <laughs> Anyways, we see that this carnival is mentioned once again. And if we peek at the Give and Take in music video, we see a couple frames, yes. A couple frames in the entire music video of these people who are like wearing masks at a carnival. It doesn't seem to be shown at all in the Let Me In music video, but you know, tell me if I'm wrong. 
After all, they definitely hit it in Give and Take In. Like, you had to pause it at the right moment. Anyways, this is a very easy connection to an Italian carnival. The Carnival of Venice. Considering that they used Italian as, like, their cross the line, like, in their intro and all of that, like, the fact that it's Italian makes sense. This carnival actually happens around Easter, usually. So I do wonder if that's a hint as to when we can expect their comeback. Although <laughs> that's nothing more than speculation at this point on my part. Um, but I do think that it's a possibility because it does sort of seem to fit the timeline, the time frame. I could see them coming out with something in a couple months. This carnival is celebrated slightly different in several cities. Of course, the original idea is that everyone dons a mask, and the idea of this mask is to hide your social standing. So you could be incredibly rich or incredibly pure, poor, but everyone is wearing the same mask. You are all on the same line, so to speak. But this mask connection does not end there. As I said, they also use the Phantom of the Opera music in their outro. And if you're even slightly familiar with the Phantom of the Opera, you know that there is a mask in the story. The Phantom himself wears a mask. Within the context of the narrative, it's because his face is very disfigured, so he's wearing it to sort of hide his face so that he can woo the woman that he loves. But it also is used to hide his dark inner nature. It is a, like a metaphor in that sense which is starting to sound very familiar to something else. Ah, yes, it sounds like Carl Jung's theory of the persona. This is what you wear to present to other people so that you fit society's standards and you sort of blend in with them. Kind of like at the carnival where everyone blends in with everyone else. But to take the idea of the mask and even the persona just a little bit further, I, I really feel like they're gonna be leaning into that like concealment aspect of it. And Hypen actually like is representing idols in our real world. There's a there's kind of like a dual thing. They have their storyline that is the fictional storyline that I usually talk about, but there's also the references to real life and real idols. I will talk about that more in detail in a bit, but just know that like when idols go out, sometimes Sometimes they have to try to conceal their identity, they will wear big sunglasses, they'll try to be inconspicuous so that people aren't following them. And within the idea of the narrative, this could be them maybe concealing their vampire-like identities, or if they're like human or not, or mortal or immortal. They're all on the same line. They could be either. They could be hiding any abilities that they might have, which brings me back to that picture. Don't be last. Don't be last for what? Exactly. The carnival letter says, life and death mix up and down flip. Given taken says, I flip over the world, I step into the sky, which, hello, let me in? And the outro says, day is like a flipped carnival, where up is down and down is up and life is mixed with death are what we must survive. Survive. Don't be last. They are painting this carnival as kind of like a weird Hunger Games battle royale style thing, like competition or something, and it really makes you wonder. Especially life is mixed with death. Like that's a very interesting line. Is this because they are vampires or is it something else? In Give and Take In, Jonglon disintegrates under the sun, <laughs> but I don't actually think that he dies at all. Or rather, if he does die, it's not, it's a non-issue. Rather, I actually think this might be how he gets to the carnival, uh, like, in the first place. Likewise, in Let Me In, there seems to be like a grave that Jonglon disappears into. Is this the same idea yet again? Is this why they want to escape where they are? Because we kind of see that same escape theme in both of the music videos. Are they trying to get to that carnival through crossing the line that divides them from their opposite? A flipped carnival, what is that? A carnival is meant to be fun, so a flipped carnival would be something akin to a nightmare? My question for you, is why are they headed to something that will be a nightmare? Hi, so I just want to interrupt because we just got the outro across the line music video, which was like an animation type thing. Um, I'm not too surprised it came out. It mostly supports my theory of them crossing line and ending up at the carnival, which is fantastic. Um, one thing I did want to mention that I never spoke about in anywhere else in this video is that there was like kind of like a dog werewolf wolf thing in there, so I do think we need to bring back the possibility that there is also werewolves or something like that. Um, it also talked about, it really focused on that last line about waking up within a dream. Um, the whole thing makes me think of TXT. I don't know if that's just because I follow TXT so closely, um, but like the dog werewolf thing, the werewolf, the wolf, 
makes me think of the line in TXT's Blue Hour, which I can't verbatim remember, so I'm just gonna put it on the screen. <laughs> and then of course the like waking up within a dream already makes me think of TXT because like they just had like the dream chapter. There's three different versions of the dream chapter. Um, so that's like, you know, anyway, I just wanted to add on to that for you guys and yes. <laughs> So basically, I think it's possible that we're gonna have to think a little bit more about like werewolves, possibly werewolves versus, versus vampires, not entirely sure. I don't reference this at all in the future of this video uh, because this, <laughs> this is just a part I'm adding in right now. So just keep that in mind, I guess. Before going into a give and taken, I want to remind you guys that the theme for everything right now is this line. The members are currently on the line and that the outro and the completion of this like album is them crossing the line. This is something that we see in both music videos thus far, but it's both in terms of real life idols and the narrative. I do feel like in this music video, actually both of the music videos, there's definitely this like double-sided story where it's talking about what idols go through and like the way that they're perceived. They are placed above others in social standing and held to extremely high standards standards that are sort of almost toxic because they are still just people like everyone else, even though the storyline is like, no, they're immortals, ha ha ha. Which in a way is true, they are immortalized through their music. This is prevalent in Give and Take In, but it's also very obvious when you're taking a look at Let Me In. Vampires are immortal, and we were sort of told that they were reaching to become immortal, so thus they became vampires. But we do see them going through a lot of pain to become this way in the Give and Take in music video, which is a good parallel for trainees sort of reaching that idol status. There's a lot of struggling and pain that they went to to actually get there. And in Let Me In, they're quite literally on display as they talk about being your boyfriend. Once again, it's showing us that they are perceived as something to be enjoyed and to be admired and looked at, despite how they may actually feel about it. In the lyrics of Give and Take In, they talk about the sun, which, as you'll see, is, I think, related to their storyline, but it's also really akin to sort of the lights shining down on you from the stage. It's the spotlight, and it burns them sometimes being under this light, but they still dive in headfirst because that is the fate that they created for themselves. They actively created their own fate, and if we look at it that way, the whole thing is really easy to explain. It's a really good parallel for uh, idols in the real world. Uh, but the thing, like I said, with Big Hit, they often write their stories and their music videos in a way that they are covering multiple issues or multiple things at once. So while it is talking about the idols, and I think that's a very important thing of what they're talking about, they are also showing us a narrative that is happening within the Enhypen universe. But even though I will generally be focusing on this story, I don't want to erase this narrative of the idols and what they're going through because I think it's very important. And not only that, but I actually think it'll be heavily ingrained in the Enhypen storyline. So understanding both of these is just, it's, they're really important. Um, but anyways, <laughs> now that I've stated that, let's move on to Given Taken. There are two obvious timelines in Given Taken. I've previously referred to it as the past and the present, but I don't actually think that's correct, mainly because I don't think the storyline is linear in the slightest. In fact, part of this might even happen outside of time itself, which is something a little hard to wrap your head around, but but things like this pen light that this lady is using to examine their mouths, technically it shouldn't really exist. Like, that is a modern invention. It should not exist in this Victorian time. It looks like it's battery run. <laughs> so yeah, I think this happens outside of time itself. This isn't actually all that far-fetched because remember what we heard about the carnival, a grand carnival where order has overthrown time. I'm not entirely sure how this is accomplished or what their plan is for showing it to us because this is a very hard concept to just grasp in general, but order does seem to be a very important part of their lives in Give and Take In. So let's just look at all of the things that I think are really important in this music video, the main key things. Taking pills. As I mentioned, this is definitely the first thing that makes the boys feel like they are being controlled, like there's an order to their lives. This may also be an attempt at controlling like time in general, or their time. It's hard to say exactly what these pills do. The idea that they might 
actually be stopping time for the boys so they're not aging or that they are not progressing their transformation into vampires or into their powers, but it is for sure something that is keeping them under control and contained within this environment, this house that they're living in. Likewise, it does seem to affect their memories, specifically because after we see Heesung take the pill, the memories of them together flash across the screen. Of course, it's unclear how genuine and recent these memories actually are, and it seems to cause like physical pain to them. And Heesung has like very vivid visions to the point that he's actually like reaching out towards these visions to touch these memories. Like I said, control is a factor here. If you're always stuck in your memories, you can't exactly think towards the future. But I do think this control is slowly being watched, which brings me to Jonglon. Yes, he's his own point. Jonglon does seem to be the first to like consistently escape from things, which when I cover his part at the end where I do a breakdown of all the members, I'll get into that a little bit more. But in the context of this music video, I do think he's the first to kind of realize that there's something else going on here, that there's a control or oppression happening to him and the others. And this could be what's actually sort of separating him from the rest of the members because they're still taking the pills and they're trapped in their childhood memories. But at the end of the music video, it does feel like we are led to believe that Jungwon has found a way around this. Perhaps this is related to why we see a pair of fangs sitting on the table here. This is happening during the same part where, where the lady is like checking everyone's mouths. Like I said, it does seem like the pills are supposed to suppress their like vampire-ness. So if he purposefully removed his fangs to make it look like he had suppressed it and then reinserted them or something. I don't know. He He's definitely found a way around this suppression. He's allowed his fangs to actually grow. It may also be related to drinking blood. Not 100% sure there. Um, he also notably is actually the only one that we see disintegrating or burning up in the sunlight. Everyone sort of... Everyone sort of like has a lot of smoke <laughs> that comes out of them at various points in the story. But like, he's the only one that we actually see like starting to disintegrate. Now I consider, like I said, this is how he might've gotten to the carnival or something like that. And I don't necessarily think it's something that we should take literally. I don't know if he actually died. After all, in Island, they used a quote from Demian. The egg is the world. Who would be born first must destroy a world. That's where the quote ended, but it also has. The bird flies to God. That God is named Abraxas. I think that his death here is actually the idea of destroying the world that is referenced in this quote. So it's not necessarily literal or permanent. Of course, I could be wrong and it might be something else entirely. If you have any other ideas on that front, please leave them below. I would love to hear that. The next important thing in this video are the windows. Most notably, there is a window separating Jungwon yet again from the rest of the members. This scene is easily described as like the part where he stops kind of living in falsehood and now he's like, looking in and seeing this is where he had been and now he realizes there's a separation between him and the others now that he's kind of realized. They're all living in the security of those memories that may or may not be real and he's on the outside now realizing that they're trapped in them. However, I do want to say that this scene where he like reaches up to the window does mirror imagery that we saw in one of the intros where there was blood instead and that's a little bit concerning. It makes me think that uh, while Jungwon might act not be dead right now, there's possibly danger coming to him in the future because that just, it just see, seems really ominous. But um, you know, that's, that's for future me to be concerned about. <laughs> the other notable part with a window is the part where Sunu is like leaning over to bite Jungwon's neck and the window is cracking behind him. And so the facade, like I said, is starting to crumble. Uh, I will talk about this kind of idea of glass breaking a little bit more when I get to let me in because I think it's more significant than we're letting on. Like it's in literally both of their music videos. If you watched the New Year's Eve live uh, and you saw and had been performing Give and Take In, you'll note that there is like a ton of windows behind them. They really wanted us to see that these windows, this idea of a window is very important. Like, I think it has a lot of meaning in their universe. In fact, there's actually a line referencing windows in Let Me In, where it says, will you open your window? And this is adding to the idea that the window is just a form of separation for them. You can see through a window, you can see through to the other side. So it's like, kind of like the line on itself. You're on one side and then you look through to the other side and you can open a window or you can, <laughs> crack it, I suppose. There's also the common phrase that windows are the eyes to your soul, which may or may not be relevant because it's an English phrase, but 
I did find it interesting. Plus, it segues to my next point. Eyes. We get a lot of focus on eyes in this music video, both like in the choreography and in the video itself. We even do get a shot in Let Me In where it kind of like focuses on the eye and there's like a weird reflection happening in his eye at that point. But mainly the ones that I want to focus on in this video are the idea that the eyes change yellowish, which seems to be part of their transformation into vampires, or like a way to prove that the shift has happened. Because we see Jake checking Nikki's eyes, uh, for example. As in, he's possibly checking to see if he's fully transformed or not. Not entirely sure on that, but definitely something to consider. If we see someone with yellow eyes in the future, we, let's just let's just assume they're a vampire. And talking about eyes, there's one other very significant moment with the eyes, which I will actually talk about in the individual member sections, and it is Sunu's eyes, which are two different colors right at the beginning of the video. <laughs> they're brown and they're blue, and I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to cover this here, but I do want you to remember this as a very important detail about Sunu, because he's got some secret. And in a word as to why I am suspicious of him, Control. Speaking of taking control, aiming the arrows of fate. We get a scene where they're like aiming arrows. This is in the choreography and the music video itself. And we have a line referencing fate's arrows. And this sort of just shows them like taking back their own destiny, taking back control. Once again, that aspect of control is there, but it's just in a different way than it was before. No longer are they the ones being controlled, but they are the ones in control. So we also have that connection of the line. Again, they will take control of their lives no matter what anyone else says. And this is also where like there's a shift in the music video and they start to actually take control of their own powers. So I think like whatever Jonglon decided, you see it start to happen to everyone else as well. The lyric that follows this one is, I face the horizon inside of me. Once again, implying that line. And it makes me think that this is a metaphor for growth, which would not be surprising at all. <laughs> growth seems to be like a major theme in just like big hit universe stories in general. So they're turning and facing their arrows into the horizon, shooting it off into the dusk or the dawn perhaps, probably the dawn. This is where they step off the line and like go to the future that they decide. Crown. Crown is very important, believe it or not. There is a line in the song that goes, red blood on that crown, that blood dripping down. This takes me back to what they might be aiming for, the carnival and that darker feeling. Likewise, in that Dusk version of the album, we get a photo of a throne. And who sits on this throne? Or what sits on this throne? A mask, a bear, and a picture of a ferris wheel. Which, yes, does make me think of TXT. It also makes me think of G-Friend and their recent reveal of a carnival being relevant to their story. Anyways, one of my first theories for Enhypen was that it was connected to the seven classic planets, which several gods are named after. These appear as stars in our sky, and Enhypen talks a lot about like stepping into the sky, diving into the red sun, uh, possibly becoming that like star, that god-like presence in the sky. So not only are they reaching for the throne, like that king status with a crown, but they might actually be reaching for above that, for godhood, which might be why time is no, like, time doesn't matter to a god, right? Like, gods can do whatever the heck they want. There's also this weird pillar thing that we see in the music video. This, this appears in the parts where they seem to be in the more, like, modern time, the present, or the future, I don't even know. Like I said, time, time is weird. And while I don't know exactly what this pillar beacon light thing is, in the background of some of their dance shots, Along with those weird carnival images, we also get flashes of like a huge crowd of people standing around this pillar with seven people on an elevated platform in front of it. Seven people, like the seven members perhaps, and then like I said, a huge crowd of people and they're all wearing hoods. So it's as if there's some kind of event, a carnival maybe, or they're like waiting to hear them speak or something like that. My initial impression when watching this scene and when looking at it was that these seven people were being like worshipped by the people who are watching it. Like there's, it kind of looks like there's several parts where they're bowing to them. I can't quite tell though because the images are in like the lowest quality known to man. They don't want us to know the answers, that's the thing, right? But this does fit in with a line in their intro. It was for us and the others, and it says, the others are looking up at us in veneration and we look down on them with envy. Because when you are looking up and idolizing something, right? Um, you don't necessarily see all of the work and the struggle that they went through. Again, coming back to that idea of the idols that I mentioned before. Likewise, they look down in envy because they're like, wow, remember 
when we could do that. Remember when we, it's sort of like have like that sense of ignorance, like ignorance is bliss <laughs> type thing. Like, wow, when you didn't know, things were simpler. And so it's kind of an envious response. Not only that, but you can live more normally. Um, you can be invisible if you wish. Anyways, I do wonder if this pillar will make another appearance in the future. I will definitely be looking out for it because we have no answers as to what it is. It's just a random beacon of light at night pillar thing that they are gathering at. And Hypen started out as a competitive show island. Though the selection was out of their control and in the control of the judges, their own actions were something that they could do and handle, and I think that's kind of what Give and Taken is about. Like I said, it kind of plays into the storyline as well of the vampires taking control of their life. There's just, there's a lot of parallels to reality, to the point where I actually wonder if they will tie our reality into their storyline at some point. I kind of assume this for TXT as well. There's just some hints that make me think, oh, we're gonna affect the storyline. I just feel like somehow they're gonna tr figure out a way to incorporate the audiences into the storyline and it'll be very interesting to see how they do that. Promised Neverland. <laughs> Oh, there have been a ton, a ton of connections to Enhypen's story based off of this particular anime. So many that I think like every third comment on my initial reaction video was like, this is The Promised Lever Neverland, you need to watch The Promised Neverland. Lena, please go look at The Promised Lever Neverland, it's The Promised Neverland. And I was like, whoa, okay. And honestly, I totally get it. Looking at it, you see the visual similarities. And that's not even looking at the theories that are like connecting the two, just looking at the like, house and orphanage kind of idea that's exactly the same idea that we have for Give and Take In. But if you look at some of the theories, there's several thematic things that tie them together as well. So the anime is about these kids who are in an orphanage and they think they're getting adopted. However, it turns out they're actually being sold off to demons to be eaten. <laughs> So that aspect of like controlling their knowledge is there, which is similar to Enhypen. In this case, the kids are working together to escape, which might also be the case for Enhypen, which is why they're sort of checking each other for these signs and developing these like abilities. The kids want to take control of their fate and make not get eaten by demons. <laughs> and the same can be said for Enhypen. Um, it's hard to say if Enhypen were actually going to eat eaten by something. I, I wasn't getting that vibe, but you never know. However, a major reason that people are connecting this anime with the like Enhypen storyline is because of a tweet that Bong PD made. It was on August 14th, 2018, where he literally in hashtags said he liked the anime The Promised Neverland and thought it was a good concept. I do want to clear this up because there, it has never been explicitly stated that Enhypen's story is based off of The Promised Neverland. And Enhypen, I feel like they're gonna have a really deep, interesting story that is totally unique. Looking at The Promised Neverland, it allows us to see uh, the Enhypen's like, give and take in story in a new light. It gives us another layer of understanding this particular story. And the same can be said about the book Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, which again, home for children with abilities, you know, there's some visual similarities, some thematic similarities. This book is ironically also connected to TXT because of the same ideas. Like I said, inspiration may have been taken from it, but it's not going to be following the same narrative necessarily as these books. They often will connect to these stories because they have similar themes of like growth or they have vampires in them like i know twilight has been something that people have connected it to because of the yellow eyes we also got a whole weverse article connecting shakespeare's like writings to and hypen's lyrics in the album like hamlet was there for example which like i said with the kings and stuff like that and that makes a lot of sense i will link that article in the description if you want to read that but yeah i think it'll be interesting to see what other stories will be similar to and hypen in the future anyways let's 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 just move on let me in. Before Given Taken, there seemed to be like two different timelines or two different like universes that were going on. In Let Me In, there seemed to be at least two, maybe three more. Yes, more. <laughs> Possibly because of that whole space one, which does seem to get like far less attention than the other two 
for reasons unknown. But I do think that this whole music video happens in a different universe or a different timeline than given taken. The major thing to note in this music video though is that they do seem to physically be crossing over into other realities. As in, they're crossing the line. Can you open your window? of your cube, your reality. There's also very prominent hints of time traveling in this music video, which I will get to in a minute. First, the second title for this song is 20 Cube, which refers to the size that an aquarium must be for marine life. This definitely implies that part of this is meant to be like showing us that these boys are in an exhibit. They are like the marine life, they're to be looked at and admired. And this definitely ties into the whole like tied to idol things again. Their lives are put on display for the whole world to see. I think this is a pretty common, commonly known aspect of idol and celebrity life in general. This is also probably why Nemo is mentioned in the lyrics. I've been looking everywhere for my Nemo. Finding Nemo is a Disney movie where he literally ends up trapped in an aquarium after essentially being kidnapped from his father. <laughs> and his father is looking for him. That's the concept of the movie. I don't know why I'm explaining this to you. I know it's a really popular movie, but you know, just in case. This could actually give us more context as to why the boys are, you know, traveling and like around this museum at night. They might be looking for their Nemo, for something else, for themselves in another reality that they maybe they knew that were trapped there for whatever reason. Once again, using the idea of this to give us more context into the narrative. And they do actually seem to be searching for something, or at least they're leaving clues behind the gummy bears, which I'll talk about that in a bit. <laughs> Likewise, I think it's important to note that the like name Nemo actually comes from Captain Nemo, the adventurer, <laughs> who is from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and Mysterious Island, which just gives me vibes. Nemo also means nobody in Latin, which might not mean anything at all, but um, it's a fun fact if you didn't know it, but that is not the only possible marine life reference that is used in this video because, and you, you, you already know it's coming, the whale. I, specifically a humpback whale. This is pictured in one of the photos behind them during the dance shot in the museum. And yes, it is in fact a humpback whale, not a dolphin. I've compared the pictures. A dolphin does not have like the white belly that a humpback whale does. There are white bellied dolphins, but they have very distinct patterns that are not present in this photo and none of the other whales match. This is a humpback whale, 100%. Did you know that a humpback whale sounds like this? This sound actually plays during the break in the song. If you saw my reaction, I noticed it in the reaction. Wow. And this is also the same humpback whale noise that we see in TXT's universes as well. Now, I don't know the true significance of the whale, but I do have some thoughts, some theories, and where I think it's based off of and where it came from. Um, I've kind of talked about this a lot with TXT before, but in case you're here and you've never seen me before, let's just let's go into it. It is most likely connected to the whale from BTS's Whalian 52 and the one that we see in like the We Are Bulletproof The Eternal video as well. And I think in one of the ones for BTS universe, like the game. Anyway, the Whalian that they talk about in the song is a reference to a real life whale that um, speaks in 52 hertz, which is a different frequency than all of the other whales. So it's, it's a lonely, lonely, lonely whale which is very sad actually. None of the others of its kind can hear or understand it, so. And yes, it actually is a humpback whale. This whale is often seen floating in the backgrounds of performances in the sky or in the sea, which if you know, you sail through the sea, you can also sail through the sky. So, you know, it's, that ma it makes sense, it makes sense. My personal interpretation of it in regards to the universe is kind of that it's like a, a lonely god that exists outside of time and reality and is watching over them. And like in We Are Bulletproof the Eternal, the whale actually turns into the lights of the, the like army of the crowd. Likewise, during that like break in the song in this music video, we get like a white light that's passing over and time freezes actually, um, allowing the boys to escape from the like lasers that are pointed at them, which I believe are motion detecting laser lasers. Um, also the idea of stopping time brings us back to that idea of control and stuff like that relating to the carnival. So yeah, I do think that maybe supports the idea of the whale being like some kind of god looking over them. Um, beyond this, I think this is probably the most active we've ever possibly seen the whale, assuming that is the whale doing that. The whale generally does not take an active role, it takes the role of an observer. I also want to note that this white light made an appearance in the New Year's Eve Live, which once again, 
exclusive paid content, cannot show photos. Um, but this, th there was like a VCR and Jungwon walks in and he's holding a candle. Everyone else is asleep around him. And he walks over and picks up like this gem. And as he picks it up, a light passes overhead illuminating rainbows on everyone's faces around him and they start to wake up because of this light and the rainbow or whatever. I'm not sure if it was the light or like the gem itself, but I do want to note that it did seem to be a positive thing in that respect, so I do think it's a good thing, not a bad thing, although I can see why people would interpret the white light like as something negative that happens in the music video. People are like, oh, you have to freeze because there's a light watching you or something like that, which is also a very valid interpretation. Anyway, speaking of lights, let's let's talk about the red light. This red light was also seen in the intro trailers with the scene with Jake in the car. It does seem to be the opposite of blue. So if the blue signals magic and the intangible, like things that you can only imagine, then the red signals something changing or happening within their reality or their perceptions of reality. Um, and it may also reference some kind of corruption as we've seen with TXT. Likewise, there's a line in the song that literally says, shining blue might turn red. And that implies that there's some sort of corruption happening to change the blue from blue to red. Plus, like I said, in terms of TXT, when we see this red light, bad things generally happen. Corruption seems to be a good word for it. In and Hypen's case, both the moon and the sun have been associated with the word red. In Give and Taken, they have the line, dive into red sun, no lie. And the intro tells us, blood red moonlight blazes, unquenchable thirst flares with fury. It's hard to know exactly which this might be or if it's something else entirely. And I think that either way, the red associated with these two opposites, again, are gonna be really important in the story. Another thing that's important in the story is time, or specifically, time travel. The very, very beginning of Let Me In actually plays a clip in reverse and slowed down from later in the music video, where Sun Moon says, I'll give you my blood. In the reaction, they assumed it was a different line. I can't remember what the line is offhand, but um, they said it's a different line, but I double checked, it's definitely, I will give you my blood, in reverse. So this music video is literally starting by telling us that this is not gonna happen in a linear order. It starts sh by showing us a clip playing in reverse. So it's not happening in the order that it's shown. And like I said, there are several things that tip us off to the fact that time travel is happening. And if you're familiar with the big hit universe in general, like this is not a surprise. BTS has time travel. TXT has time reversal. G-Friend literally has them jumping back in time all of the time. Like, that's like a major portion of each of these um, universes. So the fact that Anhypen has time travel, or t traveling possibly outside of time, uh, that's not a surprise. But I do want to say in the BTS universe, when Jin travels back in time, there is a very specific thing that happens, and that is glass shattering. Either the sound itself only or actual visuals of this happening. It's very prevalent in the notes. If you've read the notes then you'll know like the glass shattering is what happens when he travels back in time. He hears it every time. If you remember me talking about the windows and give and take in the glass is consistently cracking. Though we don't actually see it shatter the way that it does with BTS. So it might be possible that they're not trying to shatter the glass of reality or whatever that is. Once again, windows. Windows are important. More important than we think they are. Not only that, but um, the cat is actually what gives Jin the ability to time travel in the BTS universe, so I do wonder if they are doing this, if that is the case, if the cat is somehow responsible. And yes, I will come back to this point in the future. In terms of time travel, there are other hints hidden in the music video as well. The part with Sunu and the blue drink. Looking closely at his face as he takes a sip, he looks totally fine. And then as he puts the cup down, suddenly there is a cut on his face. This makes me think that the by the time we see him put it down, this is the second time that he's drank this blue drink and done this sequence. Because we see him get the cut later in the music video when he's like play fighting with Hisung. I'm generally really suspicious of Sunu. Like, <laughs> I mean, look at the look that he gives Nikki here. 
I just get the impression that he knows something. And it's not for the first time. Speaking of suspicious activities, Sun is seen like actually carving the number five into the wood here. What could this mean? This could be perhaps him counting the days until the light is passing over, which I will cover in a bit. Or perhaps he is counting how many times they've done this before. Have they done this five times or only once? Like, if they have, why do they keep going back? Is it because the glass shatters and so this they have to go back in time? Or is there something else happening here? And not only that, but if they are going back in time, who actually knows that they're going back in time? My guess would be like Jungwon, Sungun, and Sunu. Maybe Jay, although I'm less sure on that front. Anyways, it's clear that not actually everyone knows that they would be going back in time or doing it again. There's something going on here. And this brings me to my next my camera died, and then when I tried to refilm yesterday, uh, lots of stuff happened, and it didn't work out, apparently. So, um, just ignore the fact that this is a different day and a different set. We'll just continue. This brings me to my next point. Possible dimensional travel. Throughout the music video, we see, like, a black square portal thing. A worm square, if you will. And this does seem to lead to different realities. The strongest proof for this is towards the end, where of course there is a huge crack that appears on both sides of these different realities. We've got one where they're like hitting the wall and there's a crack appearing there, and then there's one where they're in the night version of the museum, and the crack is there from the boys hitting the wall. We see the square appear again in that moment, and that's when they like break out and all the stuff happens. <laughs> And once again, it's glass cracking, so like we have that like separation of the glass again, like the windows. Yet, as the boys break out and kind of cross that line, past that barrier that had been placed there, the ones who were like wandering the museum just aren't there all of a sudden. Why is that? We know that they were there because the gummy bears are still visible. So what happened to them? Well. There's a couple different theories. First, I do really think that these are two separate versions of the boys, one that was in the like cube and then one that was in the museum. And this is reinforced very early on in like their lyrics, as early as Into the Island, where the lyrics said, you are another me, I'm another you. So some theories have suggested that the boys actually swapped places. So because the boys in the cube escaped, the boys who were in the museum thus became trapped, which does seem to be supported by the end of the music video because they're like trapped in the cube and they have like the sheets on top of them and stuff like that. Um, but I want to, I want to just give you something else to think about, something, something a little bit further. What if they weren't actually trapped? We do see the glass starting to, to break, but what if they were hiding, like intentionally were hiding? Why, why, why would they be hiding? Why would this happen? Well, uh, I think that this clip with Jimin in the Japanese version of Blood, Sweat, and Tears really sums it up for me. Yeah. Anyways, uh, let's talk about the gummy bears. As I mentioned earlier, it's something that is like sticking, they're sticking to the glass, kind of think it feels like they're leaving like a trail or perhaps like it's breaking the glass, like a catalyst for breaking the glass. Not sure about that one. We do see it on the broken glass, but I think part of that is actually meant to be like an indicator that they had been there, as I mentioned. So you know that the other boys crossed over into their reality. Additionally for this, gummy bear thing. A lot of people have actually mentioned they think that it is related to blood, and I guess you can see that after all blood is red. When you are in space, liquid sort of tends to like gel together and create like these forms, but that is not the case when you're outside of space. This theory has been like ridiculously popular for me and I just can't personally get behind it, but I see where it's coming from and I understand why people think that way, especially because they're vampires. Blood is red. If they are vampires and we do want to like follow that line of thought, I imagine that like if vampires existed in the world, they would create like snacks that were like gummy bears, but they have blood in them as well. So like, maybe that's an option. After all, we actually do see a package, like them holding like a package that kind of looks like it could just be a pack of gummy bears that they're just actually just sticking around somewhere. The gummy bears might also be associated specifically with space. After all, we see them floating around here with Jake, but he could have just, you know, opened up a pack of gummy bears and they were floating in space. I don't know. The other important thing about the gummy bears is the actual shape of them, which is, of course, a bear. This is not the first time we've seen bears in the Big Hit universe. With Enhypen, we saw it, like, like I've said, we saw the creepy bear, give and taken. And then with TXT, we also see another different kind of creepy bear. Anyway, I feel like 
teddy bears in general are kind of important. Um, they could symbolize childhood or something related to that, although I'm not 100% sure in Anne An Hypen's case, but I do think the fact that they're specifically gummy bears might might actually be important because it just seems so random. Why gummy bears? Why are they sticking gummy bears on things? Like, the bears themselves are of significance. Uh, speaking of space, what about these astronauts? These astronaut- what, what is up with that? <laughs> to be honest, I don't completely understand this scene. It does seem to be like some, some kind of photo op. You can sort of see a light fixture um, when Jungwon is like floating up into space. I do think they're probably actually meant to be on the moon, not like a film set, and they're just like doing photo photo ops on the moon because they they made it to the moon or something. I don't know. Only because there does seem to be like that effect of like zero gravity, which we see in several different shots. And we know the moon is important in the Enhypen universe, and likewise, the whole idea of space is important in general in the Big Hit universe. That's also where we first see the square thing, the like square hole, the worm- wait, what did I call it? Worm square? <laughs> also, Jungwon is the one who decides to fly up to the like worm square. And of course it's Jungwon, like, of course. Like I said, he's always the one who's taking all of these risks. You know, he's the leader, he's the one who's going out and doing things first. Um, he also has like a scene where he's like looking down into the grave thing. I think it's a grave. It's like six feet under, like, <laughs> looking down into like this rectangular thing. Jungwon, man, like, I wonder if that scene actually symbolically references the same thing, like, with death that the death in Given Taken represents as well. But anyway, back to the space thing. Um, the other thing that is super strange about this entire sequence is Sunu, because, like, He's just standing there waving and being all happy, and that wouldn't be weird except for the fact that everyone else is super confused. They have no idea what's going on. And Sunu's just like, See ya, have a good trip! <laughs> and everyone's like, what's happening? What's going- why is he- what is he- what? It's not entirely clear where, um, astronaut Jungwon ends up, um, but right after that in the music video it does take us to, like, the red light forest area, so it makes me think that maybe that is where he ends up in that forest area. In which case, that might mean that that Jungwon is the same Jungwon that we see in the beginning sequence as well. But yeah, once again, Sunu, why are you so suspicious? Can you not be so suspicious? Anyways, let's look at some of like less obvious strange things that are happening, which might give us a little bit more clarity here, hopefully. First, body parts. Now this is something that's written on the calendar on December 25th. Well, we assume it's December. December 2020, it matches the calendar exactly. So on the 25th, on the calendar, behind them in the like storage area room. And there are two other things written on this calendar that we can see as well. The first is on the 19th, which says proper offering. <laughs> and the second is on the 30th that says dismounting. An interesting note here is that the difference between the 25th and the 30th is five days. And we also have seen the number five previously with Sungun. So Sungun might know what's going on, he might be keeping track of the days for this dismounting, but what is this dismounting? I think that it might have to do with them dismounting this reality, breaking out of their, this thing. It's like, think about it, if you are mounted in a box in a cube on the wall, they're dismounting their cube, they're coming out of it, they're leaving this reality. So like, they've been planning this is kind of what I'm feeling here. But as for the other two, body parts and proper offering, I, I think I'll let you come to your own conclusions on that, but I do want to give you a little bit of a factoid first on their debut performance for this song. In the background, suspended behind them was the female figure of a woman's body that looked particularly beaten up. She was in a square, several squares that kind of looked like a wormhole, kind of like our very fabulous worm square. <laughs> And of course, all of the writing for Let Me In was written in red, and right behind her there is a red moon. Body parts. <laughs> why, why, why would that be there? What, what? Let's see, what else is weird? Oh, there's a box of ammunition sitting in the storage area. Yeah. A very eagle-eyed uh, engine spotted it. I'll leave a link to their Twitter below where they found it. But they basically noticed that this box had Russian on it, and when they translated the Russian, it said 76 millimeter grenade launchers. Why would they need grenade launchers? Can someone tell me? 
does this have to do with the carnival? Once again, this is really painting that picture. Battle Royale, Hunger Games, what is going on? I don't know, I just feel like there's a really deep, interesting story that we're headed towards, and I'm here for it. I just have this like impression that there's going to be like several different versions of Enhypen going up against each other in some battle royale to become like this god-like creature or king or something like that. I have theories about that, by the way, that will be coming if you keep watching this video. <laughs> but hear me out. Imagine they all like leave their realities and then meet up at a specific pillar or beacon, perhaps, <laughs> all wearing hoods and masks because they can't look at each other without that happening. I don't know, this is a guess, but like, that would be exciting. I would be down to watch that. <laughs> Finally, the other sort of interesting thing in this music video is that they are being watched. There's actually a CCTV camera that we see like pretty much straight away at the beginning with Sungun. Like, the whole thing, of course, with them being on display and stuff like that is all emphasizing like that they are being watched, that they are being looked at, people are paying attention to them. This ties into the idea of the eyes as well, like the cho choreography and give and take in. Um, and then of course there's actually a scene that I've never really talked about because I thought it was a mistake for the longest time, but in the intro there's this part where like it looks like there's a film crew <laughs> in the background of the shot. So if you zoom in, it kind of looks like this person is holding a camera and this person is holding like the long boom mic. Like I said, initially I thought this was a mistake, but now I'm starting to think maybe it wasn't a mistake. Once again, I'm coming back to Hunger Games a lot, and I never even thought that I would come back to Hunger Games this much in this video, but like, that's all I can think about. The boys are intentionally being filmed and watched, and we are knowing about it. Like, the very first images they released had them holding cameras. Like, that cannot be incidental. Like, that's important. Anyways, now that we have all this information and we understand that there might be two different universes and they're kind of heading towards something, possibly the carnival, another world, they're passing these borders. Once we understand that, let's take a look at some of the stuff that we got in the album because there is an interesting thing that came with the album. So there are two versions of the album and in each album there was a secret message and they are labeled one, two, and three. So you had to buy like three versions of the Dusk album to get all three secret messages hopefully and same with Dawn. And someone sent me all of the translations for these so let's take a look at what they are. Also I'm not sure if it's meant to be read like one, two, three for each album or if it's supposed to be read like Dusk version one, Dawn version one, Dusk version two, D Dawn version two or like, but to be honest, I don't think it matters. It kind of makes sense either way, which may have been intentional so that you can always kind of understand what's happening no matter what. I'm gonna read it one, two, three. It really does not matter. Scenery that I'm seeing for the first time. My heart beats. What kind of world will unfold over there? I'm suddenly very scared. I close my eyes. Is this place the end or the start? Wow. First of all, Moa, you will recognize it says, I close my eyes, which is a rule that you follow to get to Magic Island. Well, one of the rules that you can follow to get there. And that kind of, once again, probably ties back into the idea of the like mind labyrinth and stuff like that. This is all stuff that's happening like metaphysically, not necessarily um, in a physical realm, which ties back into that death idea again, <laughs> where it's like not a permanent real death. This part of this is like at least happening in the subconscious. I don't know. Adding on to that, the lyrics in Given Taken say, I was wandering through the woods of questions, which kind of feels like the woods of questions questions. Them breaking out might be symbolic of them finding their own way because they're not just following the circle of the labyrinth like they're supposed to. You're supposed to go around and come back out changed because you've made these experiences but instead they're straight up just like breaking the wall down like yeah screw that we're gonna make our own way. Otherwise these sort of secret messages do seem to tie into that idea of crossing the line into a new world and they don't know where they are because time is like not necessarily a factor here. Like are they at the start of this timeline? At the end of this timeline? Where are they? What is this? It's kind of scary, kind of beautiful. I don't know. When you step off that line you don't know if, you, if you've, you're on the mortal side or the immortal side. I shouldn't say those two words because they sound so similar. But yeah they've definitely crossed the line at this point and maybe they can sort of see through the window on the up uh, to the other side but they don't necessarily know where they are like like I said they don't know which side of the equation they're on or if they've broken off somewhere in the middle and now they're just somewhere else I don't even know this is becoming very very hard to <laughs> talk about it's very abstract this whole thing is just a lot to absorb so if you're still following I applaud you it is confusing as all heck and there are a lot of variables 
thank you big hit for that <laughs> anyways let's take a look at the members individually and see what their stories can tell us let's start with jungwon so jungwon seems to have a very major role in this story so far or at least he's been a major focus um, at this point I do think they're covering his arc first. He is the leader of the group after all, which by the way, he was chosen to be the leader by the other members. Uh, his character seems to be taking like the most risks. He's the one who does the thing with the fangs in Given Taken. He's the one who flies first to the wormhole in Let Me In. Casual leader-like things. I kind of feel like he's doing what he thinks he needs to do uh, rather than doing it because he's being brave or whatever. He's also seen like willingly given, giving his blood in both the intros and in Give and Take In. Um, so that makes me think like maybe his blood is special somehow. He does seem to be a vampire so it's not because he's human um, but it's just like something about his blood maybe because it doesn't seem like anyone's drinking anyone else's blood it's hard to say like why they're doing this um without full information but if you have any ideas for why that might be like let me know <laughs> He's also the one who seems to die in Given Taken, but as we discussed previously, like, I don't really think that's a bad thing necessarily, or that it's even a real legitimate death. It might help him get to the carnival, it might be a metaphorical death, like a cre like a destroying the egg kind of thing. However, as I did mention, I do feel like there's a concerning possible future to him, because we saw some darker parallels with the intro and Given Taken with the window. And it should be noted that that part with the window is around the part in the music video where they're talking about like thousands of doubts behind him, thousands of like mistrust. While it seems that the others are supportive on the surface, I definitely think there's some problems underneath that we haven't fully seen yet. Um, I also want to say that like before we get too into this, I think the members like personalities are very consistent like throughout the universes. Like Jongwon in general throughout the different universes is going to be a little bit more bolder. He's going to be taking more risks. And then as we go forward, we'll see that Sunu, for example, is more suspicious in every universe because of varying factors. Or perhaps they're always the same people and they're just traveling from other realities. We don't know. That is a possibility. <laughs> Hisung. So Hisung doesn't yet like have a clear role in this universe. I do think he'll likely be built upon later on. After all, he's like one of the main singers. I feel like he's got like a lot of lines and stuff like that, but generally when <laughs> when it's on him and his lines, it's either a dance shot or a group related shot in the story instead of something focusing on him specifically. So they're purposefully not showing us Hisung's like story right now. We know that he's tied to mirrors as we see him with a mirror in the intro. He's like lying on a mirror and then later we see that he has no reflection. I wonder how like that will tie in because like I said there's less information about his character than some of the other characters. In Given and Taken he's one of the characters that show us that they have vivid like memories and recreations of possibly their childhood when they take these pills. So once again, that's more of a story building aspect rather than something specifically of his character. But in Let Me In, he is the one who's like play fighting with Sunu and he is the one who accidentally hits him. I assume it's an accident and not legitimate. I do think that his friends are important to him. Kind of more of a let's have fun together kind of person. That's the vibe I'm getting from his character at this point in time. Once again, not tons of information, but that's what I'm feeling. <laughs> After all, he is leading the group in the like let me in music video where I feel like they're searching for themselves in like another universe or whatever. There's a sense of like community for him like he wants to have his friends and be with his friends. I do think the others trust him a lot after all they are following him with possibly the exception of Sunnu because of the cut but. <laughs> Jay. Jay is so far proving to be a really interesting character. We don't get a lot of shots of him, but the shots that we do get are very interesting. I do feel like from what we've seen, he's a bit of an observer. If we start at the intro videos, he didn't actually, like he wasn't shown with a power, but he was shown watching the others while he was like safely in this cabin in the woods. I mean, it wasn't a very nice cabin in the woods, but he and in Given Taken, there's like this scene between him and Jake where they're just standing and staring at each other and it kind of feels like they're having like a face off. They're talking, but like they're trying to convince the other of an opinion. It's like the verge of an argument. Does anyone else get that vibe? Part of it is like the lighting. I do feel like Jay is on the side of like, I don't think this vampire thing is that great of an idea. 
I do feel like maybe he doesn't like being a vampire if he is one and thus doesn't go out of his way to see or use his powers if he has any. If he was crafted on this line, like they said, I think he's more on the mortal side, possibly by his own choice. However, he does seem very intent on escaping in Let Me In. He's one of the first people we see like running up to the wall. So I do think he is an active participator in what's happening, but I do think he possibly has some reservations about the whole immortality, vampire, possibly carnival thing. This is just, you know, presumptions on my part based off of the couple scenes that we see, like, him featured in, but I do think that there's going to be some animosity and conflict in the future surrounding his character. Jake. I do feel like Jake is very much a vampire. Right off the top, like in the intro, we see him, he's sitting in the car, the red light is there and present, kind of like feels like it's like he's bathing in the red light, it's something he's aware of and possibly embracing, not sure if that's a corruption aspect or what. He's also seen leaning in to bite Jungwon in that uh, intro as well. As I mentioned, vampire side. And like in that face off with Jay, he's on the side of the vampires. Jay and Jake feel like they have completely different points of view, and while they do get along, I think that they have differences in opinion that might, like I said, lead to conflict, as is what happens when someone has a differing opinion. But I do think he's very, like, level-headed. I don't think he's just gonna jump into something because he's upset. I do feel like he's pretty grounded as a person, same as Jay, which is probably why they're not outright fighting. I know that he's also associated with like the gummy bears in space, but I'm not sure if that's a general thing or not. It feels like a lot more general knowledge because we see everyone kind of with these gummy bears later anyways. Other important scenes are that he's the one who is checking Nikki's eye in Give and Taken, so he does at least care a little bit about if they're presenting as vampires or not. Like I said before, the situation in Give and Taken is a little precarious. They might be being under control, so it's like, I can't tell if he, he's checking because he thinks they're turning into a vampire and he wants them to, or if he's worried that he's like displaying vampire symptoms. Either way, I do think he like is pretty caring towards the other members. Once again, kind of like Hisung, he does have like camaraderie kind of feel, but as I said before, especially when it comes to Jay, I think Jake and Jay, there might be some conflict between them and possibly some of the other members as well. We'll see. Sungun is a bit of a mystery, to be honest. We do get a lot of clips of him, just like his character feels like it's meant to be a mysterious character. Similar to Jake, he does feel like he is meant to be more on the vampire side of things compared to some other members. In the intro, he is seen with a blanket, which we actually see the blanket in every single music video as well, um, which there's only two, but like intro and then both of the music videos, that's already all three pieces of media that we see him with some sort of like blanket cape thing. So I think like that concealment is a part of his character or that idea of it. To be honest, I'm not actually sure what he's doing in the intro. He's like taking it off for some reason. I'm not sure why. It might be related to the fire that we see him cast in Given Taken. Like maybe he can just like set himself on fire or something like that as part of his powers. So if he's not wearing the cloak, then he can set his whole body on fire and become like a fire thing. In Let Me In, he also is the one who's like holding a knife and he's the one who carves things into the tree, the, the tally of five that we know. And so I kind of feel like that makes him like dangerous. He's the one who has like the most like weapons associated with him. He's the one with the fire. He's the one with the knife, like, Sungun, <laughs> what's going on, man? Likewise, he does seem to be a prime candidate for knowing about like the time travel, if there is any. I do feel like it's possible that he knows about it. Um, he does at least seem to be aware about the vampire thing because he's literally mimicking a vampire <laughs> in Let Me In as well. And I do think that he has at least a very crucial role in them escaping from their cube. Finally, an interesting fact, in the Dusk version of their album, he's the only member seen like actually eating a pomegranate. Now the pomegranates are all over the table in several of the other shots, they're everywhere, uh, but he's the only one who's actually seen eating it. Pomegranates have been in a few big hit universe related things in the past, especially with G Friend. Generally speaking, it means temptation or the red fruit of good and evil, so you can kind of choose which one it would be for you in your case. The lore around the idea of a pomegranate is really similar. Likewise, pomegranate is like a red fruit, so it might symbolize blood. But yeah, I wonder if this is reference to the choices that he will be making. What choices will he be making? Is he choosing the red? I would not be surprised 
if he chooses a darker path. We see him with fire, with weapons, associated with the color red, associated with concealment, and like the cape. I think that he's gonna be a very interesting character going into the future. Sunu. Wow. Okay, Sunu, let's, let's, let's go here, let's do this. So I've made it obvious at this point, I hope, that Sunu is a suspicious character. I think that he knows a lot more than he actually lets on. And this is interesting because like in the intro, he's kind of like curled up on the chair and like reserved looking. And I'm not sure if this is a part of his, how he appears to people or if that's actually how he feels. And this happens before he decides to jump up and become like a bat on a tree, hanging upside down. It's very interesting. But apart from this moment at the beginning, his character it seems to always be like thinking about things, like considering, observing, watching, calculating, analyzing. As someone who actually shares his birthday, I can relate. <laughs> in Given Taken, he has a lot of story-related scenes. He's seen biting Jungwon in the like child playroom that they have, which causes the glass to crack. He's seen holding a teddy bear, the creepy one with one eye bleeding. And like I mentioned before, it might be significant in the Big Hit universe in general, like a symbolism that is significant. But the fact that he's holding a teddy bear and the teddy bear has two different eyes and he also has two different eyes, that is, that, that's very interesting. Especially because the scene where he's got two different eyes happens in the moment where everyone around him disappears as if he's in complete control and totally okay with it. Control. Anyways, his eyes here are blue and brown, and I think this is important to note because there are a lot of theories out there that right now are saying that Sun is the cat. If I were to say anyone wins this whole thing, it was it would be Sunu, and he he like wins the thing and he becomes the cat. But he's not the cat yet, he's only got one blue eye. The cat is explicitly described as a creature that has one blue and one green eye. This is in the notes for BTS, this is in the song lyrics for TXT, this is in TXT's video, like, whenever the cat appears it's blue and green specifically all of the time. No exceptions. An important note though, of course, is that the cat actually has time traveling powers, it gives the powers to Jin, so that's another thing to consider if Sunu is on his track to becoming the cat. The cat has ties to Abraxas. Part of me thinks the cat is meant to represent Abraxas, and if you remember that one quote from Demian, it leads into talking about Abraxas. Is he going to become Abraxas, which, who is a god of good and evil in the first place, which is maybe why he, the cat has the two different eyes? I don't know. I think it's an interesting avenue to explore and consider. So, either he is gonna become the cat and hasn't yet, or he is not the cat and it has to do with something else. I do have a theory for this something else as well. There is one other place that we have seen, seen blue and brown eyes mixed together before and that is in G-Friend's music video for Memoria. We see Una and she has one blue eye and one brown eye. In one of my G-Friend theories where I was talking about like the whole like storyline of G-Friend up till a certain point, I theorized that this actually might be because Una has been time traveling. Her eyes are actually physically changing colors as she is time traveling. We see this happen like crossroads where they get lighter every time she goes back in time. So that was my theory and if that is the case then we have extra information on Sunu, like proof that he has been time traveling, which remember the glass is cracking which is part of the glass shattering which has to happen like when things go back in time. Likewise we have him in Let Me, Let Me In where it looks like he's been time traveling as well. Is this why? There's also a third theory as to why his eye is blue that has nothing to do with the other two theories at all. And that is of course related to the blue drink in Let Me In. You totally thought I forgot about that, I did not. So in the Big Hit universe, especially visible in TXT, blue equals magic. So what he's drinking here is a magical thing. So it's possible that because he ends up drinking this, that is why his eyes turn blue, which would put chronologically Let Me In actually happening before Give and Take In, which is a possibility. However, we know that blue might turn red, so that makes me think, like, is Sunu doing things for good or will he become corrupted? After all, I think there's a really good reason we get that solo shot and like those kind of darker scenes where Suna is just like glaring at people. I think we get that for a reason and I think that he is in fact aiming for the throne. Oh my god, I missed a whole thing when I was filming about Suno's part. I forgot to mention that he 
also has like one painted blue fingernail. The blue fingernail might also be related to the drink that he's drinking. It might be a reference to magic and that he's holding magic. So I just wanted to mention that he does have a blue fingernail and it is possibly a reference to magic. Once again, I'm not sure what that blue liquid actually is or what it does, just that it is magical for some reason and it has probably some relation to the red. Anyways, moving on. Finally, we've come to Nikki. I actually feel like Nikki is the most powerful of all of them, just like, just a guess. Mainly because like in Give and Taken, he's actually the one who's chained to the wall. And like, you could argue that it's like, oh, so he doesn't like float away or whatever. This is similar to like Miss Peregrine's where one of the characters like wears heavy iron boots so she doesn't float away. We get a shot with him actually floating and he doesn't seem to be floating away. He seems pretty in control of where he's floating and he's no longer chained to the wall at that point. By the way, this wall is a practice room wall, like, once again, tying them to the idea of idols. Nikki also seems to be the most affected by the pills. We get several shots in both the intro and in Give and Taken, where he's like, really struggling with the pills. Like, they are painful for him. People thought he was turning into a werewolf. It's a major part of the intros. It's pretty much all we see of him in the intros. We don't see his power until in the Give and Take in music video itself, unlike the other boys. I also think that Nikki's character is like more nervous, like he has a nervous disposition or he seems to be less confident than the others. For example, he is visibly nervous when entering the like red light room in Let Me In. And he is the youngest member, like in reality, and then probably also within the context of the universe. So perhaps he's the youngest vampire for, or something like that. But that doesn't mean he's lacking in determination. For example, he's the first one to hit the wall in Let Me In. But there is one interesting moment that kind of just makes me think that we have a lot more to see with Nikki in the future and that his character will definitely go through a huge development. And that is this one scene in Let Me In where he leans over to Jung Won and says, bring it back. The way that this shot is done, it kind of feels like a threat. I don't know if I'm just reading that wrong, but like, what is it that he is saying here? Is he trying to say like, bring it back, like turn back time, do it again, give something back? Is it referencing time travel, dimensional travel, something else? It's not clear, but this scene is a very interesting scene. So I do think that there is some stuff that will be going on with Nikki in the future, where his character will no longer have that nervous disposition but will become more confident, and I'm very excited to see it. I feel like his character is going to bring us several surprises. Okay, now we have reached some ties to the Vacate universe, uh, which was a thing I think you guys have been waiting for. I know I've kind of mentioned a couple of them throughout, um, but I did want to just kind of list them really quickly in their own section and just like delve into them just a tiny little bit because I know that some people will be very interested in that. And the whole thing is just very exciting, so let me start with the most exciting one, which is of course, the whale. As I mentioned previously, I talked about the whale in depth, um, so I'm not going to talk about it too much here, but the whale is a consistent part of all of the Big Hit universes minus G-Friend, and I'm not surprised that it's here, but I'm excited that it's here. I'm hoping maybe we'll get some answers. Second is the carnival, which is a new development for a lot of the other groups. So for G-Friend, we just got a teaser in their like New Year's Eve live performance where it was kind of like carnival themed. Plus on the like G Superstar G-Friend app right now, there's a, there's an event that's happening that has to do with the carnival as well. So like the word carnival and G-Friend are very intertwined, I suppose. Second, of course, is TXT, where the carnival has kind of made an appearance. We see a Ferris wheel with TXT, which is similar to the one that we saw on the chair, the throne. And of course, we've seen a car carousel, which we haven't actually seen with Enhypen, but I would, wouldn't be surprised if we see one. TXT, it seems to be a reference to their childhood. With G-Friend, I have no idea. <laughs> and with Enhypen, like I said, feels Battle Royale-esque, but it's interesting to see where they'll go. In terms of BTS, there have been like a couple references to a carnival. Hobie was abandoned in front of a carousel when he was a child, but I don't think that's relevant to the story like today. There's also people point out the like abandoned looking carnival that's in Spring Day. Once again, not sure how relevant that is. BTS's story is actually complete in the notes. So I kind of am getting the feeling that they're not going to expand on this anymore and what we see is what we get for BTS in that regards. I could be wrong about that. Yeah. Pomegranates. I already talked about this a lot, but pomegranates are in a lot of different things. The idea of like apples, pomegranates, 
things that are red. It's all over the place. Blood, sweat, and tears. We've got G friend, sort of TXT, <laughs> red in general. And then speaking of red, we also have blue. Blue equals magic is a consistency in the TXT universe. And now as we move into n -hypen, it is another consistency in the n -hypen universe. I wouldn't be surprised if it also appears in future universes. The glass beads. So these are shown in a couple different places, but every single big hit universe has them so far. In terms of n -hypen, we see it in their season's greeting. And then of course, they are in the Dusk versions of the albums. Both on the table and being held, they are a very prominent feature. And this ties them directly to the rest of the groups in the Big Hit universe, because like I said, it's in every other group. And the glass beads, I think personally, I feel like they represent like the soul and the state of your soul. So in BTS, for example, they used them on the cover of the Wings albums, and there's the whole animations where like they get like sliced through because they're hurt or whatever, things like that, representing the soul, sort of like the glass beads. We also have like a VCR where they're holding glass beads in BTS. With TXT, there's a short scene in the runaway Japanese version of the music video where they're holding a glass bead and looking through, kind of like a crystal ball. For G Friend, it's a major, major story point for them. Literally, I am not going to get into it because it's, it's literally a huge, major story point, but keeping in mind that, of course, the glass bead can be corrupted. Thank you, G Friend, for showing that to us. Magic Island, or the labyrinth and the forest and stuff like that, and the referencing of the sub subconscious mind. This is something that's really common in the Big Hit universe. Um, there's always some sort of references to it because they want to symbolically show things, and this is a great way to do it. For TXT, Magic Island is a physical location. Um, for BTS, it seems to be more like metaphorical, where they go into the, the magic shop and they have like these rooms that build themselves off of their subconscious fears or whatever like that. Magic Island sort of changes based on your subconscious. For G Friend, they are running through the forest and it leads them to the center of the labyrinth where Apple takes place, where they decide to take that temptation. That is a very metaphorical thing that's happening for them. And for N Hyphen, as I mentioned before, instead of following the rules, they seem to be breaking through the walls of this labyrinth. So maybe like the rules will not apply to them at all. Considering I think they're happening outside of time itself, that's not even a surprise. It wouldn't shock me to see more like Jungian theory themes for like self-actualization happening in N hyphen as well because Big Hit seems to really like that. The lake. This is the lake that gave G-Friend their powers. This is the lake that gave Jungkook like his little conch shell thing. This is the lake that appears in the background of one of TXT's music videos. It also appears in the background of N hyphen's Border Day 1 preview. <laughs> That's it so far. Is it gonna have a major role? No idea. I'm leaning towards no just because I feel like we're not examining that. Could be wrong about that though, never know. <laughs> the smiley faces and necklaces and dyes, um, this is in their like concept photos, did very brief briefly mention that, you know, Watchmen and TXT had a lot to do with like the idea of hiding the darkness inside with a smiley face. Um, I kind of talked about that with the Phantom of the Opera stuff back at the beginning, <laughs> but the fact that like they're wearing like these necklaces that have these designs on them make me think, once again, it's showing that like concealment aspect. They're not telling us the whole truth. They're hiding the, the tr their true intentions. And then the die is important as well because in TXT, the die are magical devices. They have magic related to it. So it'll be interesting to see if that comes into play with n hyphen as well. Wormholes, time travel, connection, <laughs> things. We did talk about this a lot earlier with the breaking glass and whatnot, turning back time, all of that fun stuff. But I should mention that TXT actually has several mentions to wormholes and like time travel, but specifically wormholes that are squares. Similarly in G-Friend, in fingertips specifically, Una passes through like a square, possibly wormhole, that takes her to a different room in the reality. Space. I don't think I need to delve into this too much. Space is a major theme in all of Big Hit universes. This ties into the whale because the whale flies in space as well as underwater. We get like lots of different space imagery, lots of different like constellation imagery just all over the board. So I really hope that n -hypen will dive more into this. As I said, the seven classic planets and the gods theory kind of ties into the space theme as well. As well, we literally got spot like parts in a spaceship, which is very exciting. Whew. I hope that they give us better answers to why space is so important. <laughs> the deer. We actually see a deer head on the wall in uh, N-Hypen's Let Me In music video. This same deer head can be seen in TXT's Eternally music video behind Pumgyu and in Sunrise behind the girls in their dance shots. 
I don't know what it means or what it represents, but it does seem to be a very interesting and consistent decor choice. Point is, the deer feels significant, and I don't know how. The other interesting thing are horns. Now we see a couple different horns in the Enhypen universe. We see horns on the ground in their like playroom area for some reason, and then we also see them in the same like storage area in <laughs> Let Me In. These are very similar to the horns that Yeonjun grows out of his head in Nap of a Star. Um, those I think were like the major connections that are in this music video. If I missed any, please like leave it in the comment section below, let me know, because I probably missed some. I probably missed something like really major and just like completely slipped my mind, oh my gosh. But I do want to make like a big, big hit theory connection video again, like an updated one from the last one. So, you know, that's, that's fine. I'll just, I'll just, <laughs> I'll just fix it in that one. But yeah. That's it, that's it. We're actually finally done this monster length of a video. <laughs> that was really unexpected. I did, this is one album and I even has one album. Oh my God. And I understand that part of this was theory and I had to like introduce the whole carnival thing to you. But like, gosh, you guys, there's so much information. It's, it's absolutely overwhelming. And hopefully you've made some sense of this and ended up with even more questions than you started off with because same. Uh, but it is meant to be set up. I said that at the beginning, this is meant to be a setup for the future. So they've, they've set up a whole lot of things that are open-ended, don't have like answers yet. You know, the whole carnival thing really makes me think like they took that like clown aspect and really just said, yeah, you guys can just be clowns at the carnival. You, that's fine. Once again, incorporating us into the storyline. <laughs> Anyways, this video has been a ride to create, but if you did like it, please give it a thumbs up and make sure that you are subscribed with notifications turned on so that you're notified every single time I post a new video and maybe we'll get better answers in the future. <laughs> Ones that are more straightforward and not like an hour long because I'm sure this is gonna be an hour long video. I've been filming for three hours. Of course, I do wanna give a shout out to my patrons on Patreon. A huge shout out to Rally Carr, Alicia S, Lame Game Hero, Logan, Maria Penna, Savage 69er, Amanda Strickland, and Shirley. Thank you guys so much for your support. And as it is, thank you guys so much for watching. Stay sunny, my friends. Bye. <sighs> Red blood on that crown, that blub blub. <laughs> Yet as the boys like break out and go into the like past the bur the line that connects one thing to another, like a hyphen. Like a hyphen. <laughs> and this is definitely. <sighs> Gonna wait for the sirens to go.